Hello my friends, it is Simon Miller here and today's video is sponsored by Bosley, but more on that later. Producing wrestling is hard. Not only is it essentially a live movie with no retakes, but due to the nature of the beast, every single promotion at one time or another will want to do something over the top to wow the crowd. There is no way all of these were ever going to go to plan. So I am Simon from What Culture. please do hit that subscribe button. And this is 10 wrestling segments that accidentally film things you weren't meant to see. Number 10, Stephanie McMahon's new Tron. Stephanie McMahon has really weird entrance music. I mean, some of the lyrics are style and grace, I'm never gonna be done, lean on in, now welcome to the Queen Dom. This isn't exclusive to her either. When you listen to a lot of words from these songs, you go, what the hell was that? Things got really odd on the January 2nd, 2017 Raw though, when Stephanie walked out to confront Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. They were moaning about then GM Mick Foley, so I guess McMahon wanted to get in on this tirade. But when her theme hit, you didn't get her usual Titantron on the big screen. Nope, instead you saw someone logging in to their Facebook account. Whoops. It was just bizarre all around because I don't know how you get those two things mixed up. But again, that's live TV for you. Number nine, the bottle that didn't know how to work. No, this isn't the name of my brand new kid storybook, but it is about WWE wanting to get as much juice out of Chris Jericho and CM Punk as they could. They feuded through WrestleMania 28, and as Punk had won at the show of shows, Jericho needed to do something dastardly to get his heat back. So in theory, this was great. Because Chris decided to humiliate Punk by whipping his ass and pouring alcohol over his fallen body due to the fact that he was straight-edged. Before all that, Chris had even pitched that he should tattoo CM right in the middle of the ring, but that was a bit much, so the booze would have to do. It would have been awesome as well if we hadn't have forgotten about physics. Because for one, Jericho slipped on the liquid and fell to the floor, which kind of undermined things a bit. And then when he went to get a bottle to smash over Punk's head, it broke too early. Ruh -roh. The angle was still good, but even Jericho wrote in his autobiography this was quite embarrassing, although I do get it. I once whacked someone with some sugar glass during a wrestling match of my own, and I had the opposite. It didn't break at all, forcing me to do it again. I think it may have given the trick away to the audience. Number eight, that creeper who couldn't punch. Well, this caused quite a storm, didn't it? Some people even said it was the end of AEW. But back in December 2019, after the Dark Order had rushed the ring to ruin the Elite, we saw one of their minions laying in shots to one Dustin Rhodes. The problem was the camera zoomed right into this and it was very clear that said individual was nowhere near his head and was actually just hitting the ground. Oh dear. Suspension of disbelief is so important in wrestling because otherwise you remember what you're watching isn't exactly on the money. And given how young All Elite Wrestling was, they didn't need this kind of reaction. I still stand by the fact this guy was just trying not to hurt Rhodes, but yeah. You can't believe he was too impressed with it either. The man is the embodiment of professionalism in the modern day. I tell you though, I bet this never happened again. And next time, whoever this was, just thump people right in the jaw. He would have got a hell of a lot less hate. Number seven, Mark Henry tries a different Olympic sport. I think this just sums up what an athlete freak Mark Henry is, because despite his size, that man can move. Even still, what he most definitely was not meant to do was catch up with the Nexus as Wade Barrett's group was trying to escape from the arena. Hamling right in the middle of the factions run through the WWE, where they had made plenty of enemies, they found themselves overwhelmed one night on Raw, so decided it wasn't worth it and legged it. They were chased off by some of our heroes, but when Henry got going, he picked up so much speed, he was right by their side. You could tell this wasn't the plan, as there was a deer in the headlights moment, forcing he Slater to push him away, so we didn't all go, well, why the hell didn't he just attack him? It is absurd, though, because this was 2010 when Mark was massive. It made no difference, though. If someone shouts go, he gonna go. We interrupt this list to bring you an important announcement. Attention, men, Professor Wilborn here with a startling revelation. Research shows that around two thirds of men will experience both the thrill and the horror of hair loss. Just look at this incredibly scientific graph. But it need not be so. If you're suffering from hair loss or you're just worried about your hair, check out Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts. They possess the power of both surgical and non-surgical solutions to help you keep the hair that you have and grow fuller, thicker hair where you need it most. But that's not all, because we've teamed up with Bosley to give away a free information kit and a $250 gift card towards a procedure. The sooner you take advantage of this obscene generosity, the more follicle possibilities you'll have, so don't delay. There's a reason millions of people have gone to Bosley for answers to their hair loss questions. And when it comes to things literally growing out the top of your head, kind of mad when you think about it, 
Experience matters. To learn how you can get your hair back, get your free Bosley Info Kit and a $250 off gift card, just click the link in the description below. But for now, back to the video. Number 6, WCW Boxes The Smoke and the Mirrors The Ultimate Warrior in WCW was not good. Despite it just not being the right time in 1998, the man behind the face paint just had so many daft ideas he wanted to include, and those in charge seemed to have no clue how to implement them properly. For some reason, Warrior was just supernatural now, which was also never explained, and this meant when he arrived in the ring, we saw a bunch of smoke, and then out of the fog came the once Jim Hellwig. Now, I don't know how much mist costs, but it must have been pricey, because on one Nitro, W WCW didn't buy enough, meaning we all just saw the warrior exiting the ring. Yep, you didn't mask him at all. It meant Bret Hart of all people had to act all shocked even though he had been looking at this happening. And amazingly, this isn't even the worst part of the Warrior Hogan feud. To sum it up, it was terrible. Number five, Hawk gets in the way. This one is so good, mostly because it's so innocent. We all know that Hawk from the Road Warriors was not only a monster, but also came across like a loon during his promos. You would never mess with him if you saw him for real, and he kept that aura up pretty much for his entire career. So when Vader was being interviewed outside the locker room and Hawk popped his head out before realizing what he'd done and skulked back in, well, it was brilliant. Vader doesn't really know what's going on, but poor Hawk looks utterly disappointed in himself. And I'm sure this went down countless times over the years, but still, if you want to laugh from 1998, this will tick that box. Number four, WWE lets down Seth Rollins. Every single person in the production truck is told that if a fan attacks a wrestler, don't film it. The last thing you want to do is give this idiot the spotlight they crave, so it's just best to act like nothing happened. This was not the case in 2021. Because as Seth Rollins was walking to the back after thumping Finn Balor, one of these morons did jump in from nowhere, and we saw most of it. Why the cameras lingered on the brawl so long, I don't know, but it was genuinely nuts. Fair play to Seth, who played this off wonderfully when he arrived for the main event by looking out for more would-be attackers, but yeah, there should be some sort of pleb button that you smash whenever this goes down. Remember, this is not about you. Number three, the Shockmaster. We all know this one, but if there's a chance to talk about it, I'm talking about it, and if you haven't seen it, my word, go and do it now. It was typical WCW who went to the efforts of gimmicking a fake wall without finishing off the job, meaning when the former tugboat was ready to debut as a Shockmaster, he smashed through this concrete and then tripped over a block that no one had bothered to get rid of. He did not stand a chance. To be fair, this was always going to be a joke because for some reason the real-life Fred Ottman was wearing a sparkly Stormtrooper helmet, but the real icing on the cake is the reaction of Davy Boy Smith. He cannot hold it in at all and just shouts out that he fell on his arse, and when that stupid helmet rolled off the master's head, it was a disaster. It was the end of the character before it began, and it was just classic WCW. Nobody else could have done this so badly. Number two, Sid ruins the illusion. Right, real talk. I love Sid Justice, or Psycho Sid, whatever you want to call him. There was just something about him that was so over the top, and he entertained me. I mean, go and find the time Goldberg kept crushing his car at the end of Nitro. It is joyous. He was a rod for disaster, however, as this famous moment proved. Halfway through an interview with Jim Ross, Sid's mouth failed him as he couldn't say the word skeptics. He tried a few times before giving up and then asked the director if we could start again. The problem with this was, as JR told him, we're live, pal, leaving Sid's eyes to light up like a Christmas tree as he realized what he'd done. It totally ruins the illusion of this being a man super angry with his opponent, but Sid still makes this work. His response was to shout that he could do whatever he wants, including restarting a live interview I suppose. What a hero. Number one, Steve Austin, cowardly heel. Stone Cold Steve Austin never ran away from anyone. Even in 1996 and 1997, when he was still listed as a bad guy, he would stand up to everyone, and this is one of the reasons he took off. The rattlesnake was a badass. So when in the midst of the Bret Hart Shawn Michaels feud, the camera caught Steve running away, well, it was confusing. This wasn't meant to happen, of course, and the likely story is Austin was meant to be nowhere near this, but as the hitman and HBK ran through the backstage area, we did catch a glimpse of Stone Cold, who clocked what was happening and got out of Michaels' way. I mean, what on earth? Now, to be fair, this is a blink and you miss it moment, but when you see it, it is so obvious it was not meant to be broadcast. If it had been, the end result would have likely been Austin dropping all of them on their behinds, because that's all the audience ever wanted to see. Know of any other wrestling segments that accidentally film things you weren't meant to see? Make sure you leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this and expand your wrestling brain. Make sure you come follow us on social media and we have other videos why don't you watch one and see if it makes you happy? My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. Make sure you have a lovely, wonderful day and know that I live deep down in your heart, but not in a creepy way.